Hello guys, Peter Pan is really the grand finale of uh, incomplete records. It is a very good question. And if you really understand Peter Pan, I think you understand your work up till now fairly well. Assume a value added tax rate of 15%. Mr. Hook is a sole shareholder of Peter Pan Enterprises PTY Limited, a registered VAT vendor with a financial year of 31 December. Peter Pan is a large toy shop situated in a local mall. Kids love to visit the shop as a result of all the interesting toys on sale at reasonable prices. Mr. Hook follows the philosophy of rather chasing sales volumes than high profit margins. Consequently, a profit margin of only 20% is added to the cost of goods to determine the selling prices. Let's do that. So, say the normal marker percentage here is 20% on cost. So, 100 plus 20 equals 120. Now, contrary to most shop owners, he drops his normal selling prices for the month of December of each year with 10%, and that boosts the Christmas sale volumes tremendously. Now, if he's going to drop his normal selling price by 10%, and yeah, you all make, a lot of you make the same mistake. You say 10%, then you say 120 less 10 equals 110. Guys, it's 10% of the normal selling price. And what is the normal selling price? The normal selling price is 120. So the, the, the portion, the discount is only 12. So 100, that still stays my cost price. But what is going to be my new selling price? It's going to be 100 less 12 of 108. So it's 100 plus 8 then equals 108. And that is for the December, or oh, the December, month of December. Good. And you will see that is exactly what we are looking at, the month of December. As a result of the excellent prices that he offers, a few small shops buy from, some of their toys from him as well. They buy on credit from Peter Pan and pay the same price as the general public. However, if they settle the account within five days after the invoice date, they qualify for a settlement discount of five percent. All of them make use of these discounts and consequently Peter Pan has adopted the policy to create an allowance for settlement discount account at the date of sale. Most of Peter Pan's suppliers do not offer settlement discounts and therefore they do not make use of suppliers accounts. Allowance account, sorry. Good. Mrs. Bell was appointed as the accountant two years ago. A day before Christmas, Mr. Hook caught a red handed when she stole money out of the cash register. She was immediately suspended, and after a disciplinary hearing was held, she was dismissed with immediate effect. Mr. Hook was in serious trouble now because his financial statements for the year had to be finalized before the end of the tax year, which is 28 February. Now, his financial year end is the end of December. No. Um, you, a qualified accountant, have been friends with Mr. Hook since nursery school, and because you felt sorry for him, you offered your services to assist him in the preparation of the financial statements. They give you the following extract of the trial balance as of 30 November 2018. So, obviously, there is one month missing. But let's have a look what they want from us first. Prepare the statement of profit or loss of Peter Pan for the year ended 31 December 2018. So for all intents and purposes, I could have called this a financial statements question. But you will see the way that you're going to approach this question to get to the answer actually changes it from a pure financial statements question into an incomplete records question. Because you have to reconstruct a whole field of accounts in order to get to the amounts that you're looking for. 
Now, the statement of profit and loss, you know, start with sales, less cost of sales. And um, I think we've already seen it or somewhere along here. They tell us they've got the perpetual inventory system. The entity uses the perpetual inventory system. So, therefore, they have a cost of sales account. And also, if you look at the extract of the trial balance here at the end of November, there you see cost of sales. So, we have to adjust our cost of sales. Therefore, our inventory account is an, is an account with a balance that's been kept updated as we go along. Right. Now, so what do we know about income statements? Sales, well, sales goes hand in hand with debtors. So obviously, immediately you're going to open up a debtors account and you're going to open up a sales account. If I quickly run through the names or the type of, of, of accounts that we have in our trial balance, here we see we have an allowance for settlement discount for debtors as well. So therefore, I cannot do debtors on its own. So I can't only do trade receivables, which is the same thing as debtors. We also have to do the allowance for settlement discount. So that is the third account. And we also know that the allowance for settlement discount and the sales account they also link together because in the allowance for settlement discount account, you will have the settlement discount of 5%. And in the sales account, you are going to have the VAT exclusive um, invoice price multiplied by 95%. So obviously here, you cannot do the one without the other as well. So let's then start off with our debtors. We're going to open up a debtors account. And we say, right, our debtors account is going to have an opening balance of 47610. Our allowance for settlement discount is going to have an opening balance of 1996. Guys, if you still don't know debits and credits, you will never be able to do this um, uh, type of exercises. Our trade payables is nothing else than creditors, opening balance of 63,100. And here's our inventory figure, 345,800. Um, they also told us there's no allowance accounts applicable on creditors. So therefore, um, here, trade payables, opening balance 63,100. And our trading inventory, opening balance 345,800. Right. Now, let's just look what we have. Sales, well, that figure we're going to need for the income statement. Cost of sales, that figure we're going to need for the income statement. And here we have this very ugly thing called discount received of 2,900 Rand. Discount received, that means that it's on purchases that we've done. So park that in the, in, the, in the back of your mind. Please don't forget about that because you know that you will have to get rid of that 2,900 Rand. Because in the income statement, there is no such an account as discount received or discount granted. Then we have rent paid in advance, 1 January 2018. So here is still an opening balance which has not been transferred to the expense account as it should have been at the 1st of January. So don't forget about that when we get there. We've got creditors for salaries, salaries and wages, operating expenses, credit losses and rent expense. Right. The following ad additional information was given to you by Mr. Hook. Trade receivables. Amounts received in December 2018 from outstanding debtors at the end of November 2018. Now, opening balance here was 47610. They say we have received in the month of December an amount of 38,700 Rand. Then they go on and tell us, but most of these debtors paid in time to make use of the settlement discount. Not all of them, most of them. Right, now that is the 38,700 Rand is the amount that we've received of the settlement discount. Now I'm going to prove to you why all debtors that was lying outstanding there in the beginning of the month actually was entitled on a settlement discount. How? Now, guys, if we look at our allowance for settlement discount, 1996, what is our settlement discount percentage? Our settlement discount percentage is 5%. So that 1996 represents 5%. And if I want to work backwards from that amount to the outstanding debtors, 
that were entitled on that 5% uh, settlement discount, we would have said that our outstanding debt is here 1996 divided by 5% gives, gives us an amount of 3992. But, but remember, allowance for settlement discount is created after VAT is removed out of the invoice value. So we still have to add the VAT to get back to the total outstanding debtors. And that gives us an amount of 45908. Our opening balance was 47610. So if we subtract in the 45908 from that balance, we get an amount of 1702. Right, let's just read the next story before we're going to come back to this. Amounts received for credit sales relating to the month of December was 47,800. All these debtors paid in time to make use of the settlement discount. So obviously, yeah, we see that um, that settlement discount only pertained to 45,908 of our debtors. Now, the third bullet point tells us an amount of 1702 must be written off as irrecoverable. The sale was made in July to the client who was sub subsequently declared insolvent. So, as of the 30th of November, that 1702 would have been included in that 47680. So, there is the difference between why we had a settlement discount um, of 1996 and why the account balance differs with the amount of debtors that was actually entitled on the settlement discount of 1702. And this was then up, uh, subsequently written off as credit losses. So basically, all other debtors but this bad debt year was entitled at the end of November on a settlement discount. Now let's go back to what we have received. They say, well, in connection with November outstanding balances, we have received 38,700 Rand. Now for that amount, I'm going to continue here on top, for that amount of 38,700 Rand, if we say that that constitutes 95% of the outstanding balances, it means that the outstanding debtors that was actually settling the accounts and made use of the settlement discount was a total of 40,737. How much of the debtors was actually entitled, which were entitled on settlement discounts at the end of the November? 45908. So only payment was received for 40,737 of those outstanding debtors. So some of them has not settled their accounts as yet. Now, if that was the total of the debtors, um, that is a VAT inclusive figure. Do you agree? So if we take the 4737 and we take out the VAT out of that amount and we multiply that by 5%, then we can see how much of the allowance of settlement discount outstanding balance in the 8th of November, the 1996, was actually utilized in the month of December. So that is only to do with the outstanding debtors as at the end of November. And we see that an amount of 1771 was the settlement discount utilized. And that would have been, because I've taken out of that, that would have been the entry in my allowance account. Now I also know that we can claim 15% VAT on that amount, and we also have to post that entry in order to get that um, data out of our box. So let's go to our trade debtors account. We say we have received 38,700 Rand. There's no doubt about that. There's the figure. We have received 
700 rand. So we debited bank and we credited our debtors account 38,700 rand. But then we also said, well, that was only 95% of the amount. So we ha also have to clean out the allowance for settlement discount. And here we've worked it out and we said the allowance for settlement discount utilized was 1771. So we're going to pass that credit entry against our debtors account 1771 and we are going to debit our allowance for settlement discount 1771. Then we said, well, remember we can claim VAT on that discount that we've granted of 1771 and 15% of that 1771 equals 266. So that we also need to pass in order to clean out the total balance included in that figure. So that 266, we're going to credit the trade receivables and debit my VAT control account. Now, if we're going to add the 38,700 plus the 1771 plus the 266, then you're back at 40,737. And what was the 40,737? That was the 38,700 divided by 95%, i.e. the full outstanding invoice amount that the debtor was supposed to pay, 4737. Right, now let's write off the credit loss of 1702. So in our debtor's control account, credit losses 1702. Right. Then the question continues, and the question tells you that um, in connection with the sales, the credit sales of December, that we have already received an amount of 47,800. All of these debt is paid in time to make use of the settlement discount. So if we take that 47,800 then, and we say, well, uh, what does that constitute? How much was the outstanding data? We're going to divide that once more through 95%, and that gives us outstanding data of 5316. Then we say, okay, well, 5316, I take out the VAT, and I multiply that by um, uh, 5%. That will give me the allowance for settlement discount, which was utilized in connection with the December sales, which is 2188. And then we say, well, but remember, we also have to claim VAT on that discount that we've granted of 15%, and the VAT on that 2188 is then an amount of 328 rand. So let's go and post that amount in the debtor's control account. In trade receivables, we will have bank, the actual amount received 47,800. The allowance for settlement discount here, I've done it again. That we've said is, if we can come back here, we said the allowance for settlement discount is the amount of the debtors that I have to take out the VAT because the amount of the debtors equals the invoice value. Then I take out the VAT and I multiply that by the settlement discount percentage. And that gives me an amount of 2188. So I'm going to credit this account with 2188 and I'm going to debit my, debt, my allowance for settlement discount account with 2188. And then I must remember if I want to clean out the outstanding debt, then I have to claim the VAT as well. So 2188 multiplied by 15% gives us in a total of 328 Rand. And that, if I add now the 47,800 plus the 2188 plus the 328, I'm back at the gross outstanding amount, which was 5316. Here we've worked it out, 5316. So now I'm sure I've cleaned out that um, data completely. Just to come back to the November settlement of accounts, or the uh, settlement of the November accounts in December, we have now worked out the total amount that um, was utilized by ways of a settlement discount. 
That was the 1771. But guys, our opening balance was 1996, and they only have five days to utilize the settlement discount. So that means that that difference between the 1996 and the 1771, that equals to 225 Rand, I have to rectify against my sales account. And then I've taken it out. So that 225, I'm going to debit my allowance for settlement discount account, and I'm going to credit my sales account with 225 Rand. So that then will represent the um, credit, uh, the debtors who has not made use of the settlement discount as yet. At the uh, well, they haven't made use, so they paid too late in order to make use of the settlement discount. Right, cash sales for the month of December, according to the title of the cash slips issued by the point of sale system, amounted to 862500 So that's the easy one. I go to my sales account, and cash sales will then be the VAT exclusive amount of 750,000 Rand. The outstanding receivables, according to the debtor's ledger, as at 31 December 2018, amounted to 59,915. Of this amount, 3220 relates to sales that took place after Christmas. Guys, Christmas Day, everything is closed for business. So if that sale took place after Christmas, and then that means it will either be from the 27th, because the 25th and the 26th is public holidays. So from the 27th of December up to the 31st of December will still fall within the five-day settlement period. So that means what they give you here is the closing balance for the allowance for settlement discount. So the closing balance obviously cannot be 3220. The closing balance would be 3220 divided by 1.15. I have to take out the, the, the VAT, multiplied by 5%, and that will give us a closing balance. I think that was 140 Rand. So we can now put in the closing balance of our allowance for settlement discount as well as the closing balance of our debtors control account. Debtors control account, closing balance 59,915, allowance for settlement discount, closing balance 114. Now, if we're going to balance off our trade receivables account, you will see that we, in, on the debit side, there's a huge gap. There's nothing there except the opening balance. So that amount, the balancing figure there of 105,060, that constitutes the credit sales for the current period. So if I take that 105060, I can now put it to credit sales. And now I must remember, in sales is only 95% of the VAT exclusive amount. So the other 5% of the VAT exclusive amount is in my allowance for settlement discount. So there the 105060, that amount, take out the VAT, multiply by 5%, that would have been the allowance for settlement discount for the month of December, which was posted to my allowance for settlement discount account. And to my um, sales account, it would have been that exclusive amount of credit sales, what are 50060, take out the VAT multiplied by 95%, and that would have been the total in my sales account. Now, coming back to our allowance for settlement discount, we know how much we have received and what the discount was involved on the guys who settled their bills in December. We have already worked it out. But you will see that I need a balancing figure here in my allowance for settlement discount account because we have the closing balance now as well. So we need a debit on this account to clean out this account. And what will that be? That will be the guys who forfeited the discounts in the month of December. And if you actually go back to the question, you will see some in the question that they've said that during the month of December, a lot of these debtors did not make use of the settlement discount. So don't forget about that this balancing figure then will go to my sales account and there's the 2240 
the allowance which was not utilized, which I have to adjust my sales figure with. So total sales, and this is the first figure I can actually put into my income statement, 4789254, and here my income statement, sales, revenue, 4789254. Guys, can you see why you have to understand your work extremely well in order to keep track of all these adjustment entries that has to be passed against debtors, allowance accounts, and sales accounts? Now, the next thing that is actually quite um, logical to do is my cost of sales. Cost of sales, we've said, well, we are working with the month of December. And we've said here that this is our cost uh, or our profit formula for the month of December. 100 plus 8 equals 108. So if we have our sales figure for the month of December, then we can just go and we can go out and work cost of sales. Now, in our trial balance, they give us the opening balance of cost of sales. And they said cost of sales up to the end of November was 3210. Don't forget about that one, 3210. And then they said, okay, on cash sales, our total cash sales was 750,000. So 750,000 multiplied by 100 divided by 108 gives us our cost of sales on cash sales of 694.445. What was our total credit sales for the month of December? Total credit sales was 105.060. So I can't work with the amount that's lying in my sales account because that is only equal to 95% of my credit sales made exclusive. So I have to go back to my source, 105.060. But I must remember, I must take out the VAT out of that amount, and then I multiply that by 100 divided by 108. And that then gives us cost of sales on credit sales of 84,589. If I add all that together, it gives me total cost of sales of 3989,034. And for the moment, we're going to park it just there. Right, trading inventory. They tell us that the physical stock count revealed that trading inventory of 35,800 rand was on hand on 31 December 2018. So that is my closing balance of my inventory account. I've already plotted my opening balance in my account. Stock levels are depleted as a result of the good Christmas sales. The value of stock on hand was calculated after the net realizable value adjustment, see below, was passed. During the stock count, it was discovered that some of the toys on the floor were damaged, and it was determined that a net realizable value adjustment had to be passed against cost of sales on 31 December 2018. The entity uses the perpetual inventory system. Okay, so we have opening balance, we have closing balance. We know that there was a net realizable value adjustment, but we don't know what it is. So what do we need? We need, uh, and we have cost of sales, right? We have cost of sales as well. We've just worked out cost of sales. So what do we need? We need purchases for the period. So therefore, we go to trade payables. Um, there, remember, just put in your closing balance for your inventory account. Closing balance there at the end of the day, 35,800. Good. Trade payables. As a result of the bulk purchase made by Peter Pan in October, long, long time ago, a once of that inclusive settlement discount was granted to Peter Pan of 3335. Guys, when do we grant or when is settlement discount granted? When payment takes place. So this happened in October. So this payment has already taken place in October. I'm not going to account for that payment again now. Now, if we take out the VAT out of that amount, we see that equals an amount of 2,900 Rand. Now, can you remember this ugly thing? This count received 2,900 Rand. So, what did the, the accountant do? The accountant debited the credit account with a full amount, 3335. He credited this count received with 2,900 and he credited VAT control account with a VAT on the 2,900 Rand. 
So what we have to do is we have to adjust this discount received. Against what? Against creditors. Now, you can't be against creditors because we've already passed the discount, the total of 3335 against the creditors account. But what should they have done? They should have reduced the cost price of the inventory board with a VAT exclusive 2,900. So the accounting entry that we're going to pass is we're going to debit discount received 2,900 and we're going to credit our trading inventory account with 2,900 Rand. Then we are rid of that. So that is also an entry that needs to be adjusted against our trading, trading inventory account. Right, an amount of 574,300 Rand was paid to all creditors in the month of December. So we credited bank and we debited the trade creditors account with 574 300. The total of outstanding amounts according to the creditors ledger amounts to 56,800 Rand at 31 December 2018. So closing balance, we also have our closing balance then. So closing balance on trade payables, 56,800. So it means in our trade payables account, we need a balancing figure on the credit side. And that can only constitute our credit purchases for the period. Um, they also tell us that we only purchase on credit. So that 568,000, that constitutes our credit purchases for the period. Now, we cannot post 400, 568,000 to our trading inventory account. Why not? Because that includes VAT and trading inventory excludes VAT. So we have to take out the VAT and only the VAT exclusive amount will be debited against our trading inventory account 493913. Now cost of sales. Remember that we have worked out cost of sales but now also remember we are only doing the in entries for the month of December. Up to the end of November everything has been posted so I cannot take 3.9 million rand to my inventory account because the 3.2 million rand has already been posted. The only entries that I can take is my December cost of sales, which is the total of those two, the 694445 and the 84589. So if I add those two together, it gives me total cost of sales for December of 779034. Um, good. Now I can balance off my account. The only other thing that I have to post, and I didn't know what this was, is now my balancing figure here. So that is my net realizable value adjustment. And that is then equal to 21,979. Remember what do we do? We debit cost of sales and we credit trading inventory 21,979. So here we must remember to increase our cost of sales now was 21,979, so that gives us total cost of sales of 4,011,013. So in our statement of profit and loss, cost of sales, 4,011,013. Difference there, cost of sales. Good, creditors for salaries. All outstanding amounts were paid in December. At monthly, the payroll revealed that the net salaries of 41,700 rand should be paid. The total deductions from the employees for the month of December was 8450. Let's some of these figures. That was the net salary. And this was deductions, 8450. 95% of the deductions were paid to third parties at the end of December and the rest were paid on 7 January. So what do we have to debit against our salaries and wages account? Our gross salary. What is gross salary? It is net plus deductions. So we have to add to our salary expenses up to the end of November, the 350,000. We are going to add to it 41,700 and 8450. So here salaries 350 plus 41 plus 8450, 400,000, Isn't it lovely to have something that's easy now? Then rent. Rent is payable in advance on the last day of the month for the next month. An amount of 20,000 rand was paid on 31 December 2018. And now remember we have started here with rent paid in advance at the beginning of the year. 
which was not 17,000 rand, which was not taken to the expense account. So how are we going to calculate our expense account? It's going to be that 17,000 plus the amount paid for the year, less the amount paid in advance at the end of the year. So our expense is going to be 217,000 rand. Rent expense, 217,000 rand. Oh, yeah. Credit losses, remember, we've written off credit losses in our debtors account here. Credit losses 1702. The amount that will be accounted for in our income statement will only be the VAT exclusive amount, 1702 divided by 1.15. And there's also other credit losses of 1840 that we're going to add to that. And that gives us then a total of 3320. Operating expenses. Now, operating expenses was 45,790 up to the end of December. And they tell us operating expenses incurred for December amounted to 5,200 rand exclusive of that. So, obviously, we have to add that to the 45,000. And that gives us then a total of 50,990. So, if we have this, all our operating expenses, we're going to subtract that from our gross profit and it will, it will end up with our net profit for the period of 106.781. Go through this carefully. Make sure you understand that because in this debtors accounts, in the sales accounts, and even in this trade payable trading inventory account, you basically see all the possibilities that you can come across in financial statements as well as incomplete records where debtors, sales, creditors, inventory and purchases and cost of sales is concerned.